Welcome everybody to this tutorial. Today I am going to go ahead and show you how to actually install a virtualizer on your Windows 8.1 machine. The procedure is pretty much the same for any other Windows machine as well, so this applies universally on pretty much all Windows systems out there. Anyway, uh, this will be a bit weird because I am installing a virtualizer on a virtual machine because as you can see uh, I have let me just minimize this I have Windows virtual machine running within Linux and in behind I have my Red Hat website opened there we will download Red Hat in the follow-up tutorial but for the time being I just want to show you that this is a virtual machine and you can see it runs just fine you have uh, this gray menu bar in the top in the upper part of your screen but I mean that's easily fixable switch to full screen yep there we go switch there we go so it seems as though I really do have a Windows machine but in fact this is a virtual machine and for all intents and purposes this pretty much works so if I go down I have uh, these things here I have my menu back up but I don't need my menu for the time being. I just want to show you how you can do pretty much the same thing for Red Hat as I have done for Windows 8.1. Now there are other methods of virtualization. Uh, there are other approaches to do this. I will show three if I'm not mistaken or a couple. Don't hold my word to it. Where you will be able to do different things. For example, you will be able to virtualize your Red Hat machine within a Windows environment, you will be able to perform a dual boot of your Windows and Red Hat as well, or any other Linux distro. And the third option, uh, you will be able to have your main machine to be a Linux based operating system, preferably Red Hat, but it can be pretty much anything else. And you will install a virtualizer on that particular machine from where you will have access to your Windows 8 Windows machine should you need it. Now there are different approaches to this last part. You can have a simple virtualizer like VirtualBox and pretty much run. But I think that's 50% at capacity. If you install a Zen virtualizer, you have 95% native performance, which is fantastic which means that you really can play games and use Photoshop or do anything of a kind, uh, perform such tasks. So you, you can literally run a game, a video game, I don't know, let's, uh, let's say Call of Duty or something like that, with good perform with 95% native performance on Xen virtual machine of Windows. And it's gonna work just fine, provided of course that you have configured everything properly on your main Linux machine. Anyway, let's take this first approach and before I do, let me just uh, mention it, mention it briefly. Any one of these approaches that you take, you will be able to follow through the tutorial. So just take a look. I will show three for different cases. Uh, any one you choose to set up, any any of the three that you actually choose and set up, it will be fine. You will be able to follow through the entire tutorial without any problems of whatsoever. So there, you won't be hindered. Uh, whichever one you choose. I just said it's for personal preferences, uh, whichever, pe whichever way people want it to be. Anyway, let's just jump into Windows now. I'm here, I'm gonna open up a default web browser, which is basically Explorer here. It says I've written in VirtualBox 32-bit. Uh, be careful to actually download a proper one, although you can't really make a mistake because if you search the web for VirtualBox 32-bit, you're going to be thrown onto a Oracle website. It won't be VirtualBox official website, but it will be like uh, Oracle, its maintainer and creator. And you can download it from there, no problem. So if you go to the Oracle website, here, let me just show you, I'm going to do a web search. And pretty much the second one uh, that pops, that will be a place where you can go and download it. There we go. So once again, I found myself on that website. As you can see, you have VirtualBox for numerous operating systems down there. Most of them are Linux platforms, but different Linux pl platforms require uh, different modifications in order for this virtualizer to be able to run. 
So we got here, it says platform, Windows, 32-bit, 64-bit, no problems. I just just uh, click on this and it's going to start to download. As you can see at the bottom of my screen, it says VirtualBox 4326 something uh, win.exe download complete. So I'm not going to be downloading it during this tutorial, but you just click on this, uh, click on the selected part, and your download will begin no matter which browser you are using. It took me about maybe four or five minutes to download it. I figured I wouldn't do that during the tutorial itself. So let's just go ahead and minimize this, please. Yes. No. Uh, the Explorer. Explorer is always wonderful. It really should install Firefox or something like that, but it's a virtual machine, so I don't give it that much attention. Anyway, go ahead, uh, visit your downloads folder. It's, let's see, where is it? There we go. So VirtualBox 4.3, ah, there we go. No, which is the latest version of the lower one. Also, yeah, make it your business to actually have always the latest versions of the software they can that can save you so much trouble i mean i can't even begin to explain it so it's an exit file just start up the wizard no big deal and okay so the wizard has been started it says oracle vm box 4326 setup welcome etc just click next that's no big deal there so you have some sort of a custom pretty much like any other installation uh, if you want to play around with it uh, feel free but I'm not I'm just gonna use a default install here so create register okay no problems next install a virtual network and feed yep okay so if you're performing a download of some sort while you're are installing VirtualBox, make, sh make sure that you can continue them or that you at least don't care for them, primarily because your network interfaces are going to be reset. So just type in yeah, click yes, install, and okay, you need a permission there, excellent. So the installation process is un in route. This is, is not gonna take that long of a time. And in that period of time, I'll see if I can actually minimize Windows Explorer. Can I? Yes, I can through a very inefficient method, but oh well. Anyway, the installation procedure is going on, and even though I'm running this on a virtual machine, you there is no difference. No, I don't want you to start it. There is no difference. You will be doing exactly the same steps on your physical Windows machine if you are a Windows user straight away. I will, of course, demonstrate how to perform this process on Linux as well, so don't worry about it. If you have already installed the Linux version or using a Linux machine, I will show you how to do it. So basically, just go ahead and click on Oracle VirtualBox. Should run anytime, and excellent. This is your uh, Oracle VirtualBox interface. There is, from this point on, there pretty much are no differences uh, between virtual machines, between Linux and Windows. Pretty much the procedures are the same. There isn't anything special that you're going to do here that you're not going to do there. Basically, just download an ISO file from the net uh, and then install it. I will perform the installation procedure in the next tutorial and explain a few features to which you should really pay attention here. Actually, I might uh, just mention a few of them. So let me just uh, go ahead and do this because I already have a few virtual machines installed here. So what I've noticed over the over the course of time is that people get confused with certain things. So look, I have Windows 8.1, it says running. I select it, I right click it, I say settings, and starting, yep, there we go. So there are a few things here which you should be aware. Uh, for example, on network, I have. If you need to say that it's a bridged adapter. So remember, select bridged adapter, and then under the name, you select the name of the interface of the network interface that your physical machine is using. I cannot tell you which inter which interface that is because I don't know. Machines use different interfaces from one machine to the other but I can definitely show you where you can find 
out, uh, you just uh, go back to your. I just I'm just going to go back to my machine. Uh, open up your. Okay, I'm not going to be able to show you here, but hold on. Come on, please. No. Yes, thank you. Search. The control panel. Open it up. So network and internet. Adapters. I need adapters. Do, do, do. Network internet, network sharing center. Okay, there we go. So this is this here. Uh, this is the this. These are your adapters, and you just take a look at these adapters here. If you're using a Windows physical machine, uh, you take a look at these adapters here, and then you just uh, open up your network manager, and you see network three connected. Ethernet network three. So this is the this is the adapter that you are using, and this is what you will select in your virtual box when you perform an installation on your main machine. This is how you would perform the checkup procedure in Windows to see which network adapter you are using in order to select it in VirtualBox right here. So there we go. Okay, I know it might seem a bit confusing because I'm jumping from one system to another now, but don't worry about it. I have simply performed this to show you where you can find a VirtualBox a virtualizer on Windows, uh, where you can download it for free. And from that point on, it gets really simple. You just uh, install the system there, install an operating system there, download it first, and that is it. No difference. Uh, I'll be showing some of the things in Linux, how to do it. I'll be showing pretty much the same things in Windows, but you will see the differences are pretty much trivial. In any case, I would like to bid you all farewell. Till next time. Next time, we will download Red Hat and actual and perform an actual installation on a virtual box. So that will be one of the approaches that we're going to take to virtualize the environment of Red Hat. And then we'll after that, I'll show you how to perform a dual boot between Windows 8.1 and Linux.